Hey everybody, welcome to the YoshiCast. I'm Yoshi, today is Tuesday, June 19th, 2018, and this is episode 5 of Bag and Board. Yoshi! Welcome back everyone. This week I've just got three books from my haul to bag and board with you, and I've got one listener feedback question to go over, and we'll do that at the end of the show. So let's get started, bagging and boarding. So when I went to the comic book store this week, they didn't have any new books in my pull list, but they had an old book. Uh, the people that work at the shop know me pretty well, and they thought I'd be interested in this book, and I certainly was. This is a variant cover for G.I. Joe versus the Six Million Dollar Man issue one. Um, I think this now makes three covers I have for issue one from uh, the series, and uh, I have finished reading this series, which, uh, honestly, I read it, and at the end of it, I kind of went, huh, not bad, not a waste of money, I enjoyed it. But ever since then, it's kind of been a slow burn in my mind. And as I keep replaying the comic in my mind, I keep liking it more and more. I like that it's vintage Six Million Dollar Man and G.I. Joe. I like that it takes place in about 1983. Uh, It was just a really good, fun, campy story. And uh, I recommend it. It's a a good book. So let's go ahead and uh, bag and board this guy. Well, we can tell by looking at the inside of this book just how many variant covers there were for issue one. There are one, two, three, four, five variant covers, and I have three of these. So cool. And here is G.I. Joe versus the Six Million Dollar Man variant cover for issue number one. Uh, It looks great. Next up, I have a couple of blank covers. Uh, First up, we're going to talk about the Immortal Hulk. I don't recall what volume this is, but it's issue one. And uh, a lot of issue ones that are coming out have a blank cover. So this is cool. I, I like the cleanliness of, of the logo on this one. And when we get on to the second and last book, my, uh, my other blank, we're going to talk about the logos for just a minute. But right now, this is a nice clean cover. I'm going to go ahead and bag and board this guy. Now, something I have noticed about getting a blank cover from one of the large publishers, uh, particularly Marvel and DC, is what they do is they staple the variant blank cover on top of the actual cover of the book. So you get the, uh, the default cover that comes, cover A, as well as it's wrapped in the uh, blank cover. So what I do when I'm adding micro chamber paper to these guys is if the book is not drawn on, I will add micro chamber paper to the page after the default cover. So we're going to, for example, we're going to open up the blank cover. We're going to open up the actual cover A. And here's where I'm going to put the micro chamber paper. And I do this if the book has not been drawn on. Now, if I've had an artist do a commission on my uh, uh, blank covers, then I will add micro chamber on the inside after the, the blank cover. But on these, that aren't drawn on, I'll just add it after the actual cover underneath the blank cover. And here is the Immortal Hulk number one blank variant bagged and boarded in Mylar. And it just pops, the logo pops anyways. (laughs) And so my last book this week before we get to the questions is uh, Doctor Strange issue number one. Again, I don't know what volume this is, but this is uh, issue number one. Uh, It says legacy number 391. Um, and I just loved the logo on this. This this harkened old school to me. I do have other Doctor Strange uh, blanks without this uh, fancy of a logo. I really dig this logo, so I got these. Let's go ahead and bag and board this guy up. And here is Doctor Strange issue one, the blank variant. Looking crisp in the Mylar. Now, I said I was going to talk about these two blanks. Uh, specifically... Uh, what I like and don't like about them. Now, what they both have going for them is that they are extremely clean blanks. They're front and back. The, uh, uh, what is it? The uh, barcode on the back is in, a, is in a vertical position in a space that's n- the least intrusive. 
Uh, what is intrusive, in my opinion, is the placing of the issue numbers here. Now, it seems to me that Marvel recently has been uh, experimenting with where to place issue numbers on covers. And uh, DC is doing the same thing. I don't see it so much with their, their blanks, but I do see it with their issues. But uh, So you've got Immortal Hulk with the number above the logo. And uh, this is the one I dislike. And the reason I dislike it is uh, it appears that by placing the issue number and Marvel at the top here, it is having to bring down the logo slightly. Uh, why am I nitpicking about this? Because artists who draw on these covers want as much space as possible. You give an artist with a very minimalist uh, blank cover, they're very happy. Um, so I like them to have as much space as possible. I don't think they're getting it when they do that. Now, yes, uh, the Doctor Strange logo is larger, but they have put the, the issue number over to the side, uh, which allows this larger logo to be pushed up as much as possible. I prefer the issue number on the side. So yeah, these are, these are two very nice, very clean covers. Uh, I just uh, prefer the issue number being placed on the side so that the logo can be pushed up as much as possible. They should have done it with this one. They didn't. It's not the end of the world. I just wish they had done it differently. And so yeah, these are these were my three books this week. And we're going to move on to my viewer question from Dinobot Maximize. So uh, Dinobot asked uh, specifically uh, about how I catalog and track the comics I own. And the quick two cent answer is I use a spreadsheet. I use Google spreadsheets uh, specifically. Um, and Dinobot wanted to see examples of, of this. And uh, I'll show some stuff on the screen. So uh, I use these, I use a spreadsheet and I've gotten the columns, uh, the different subjects on the columns came from other people's templates for doing this. Uh, that's how I propagated that with so many. And, uh, you know, when you look at the spreadsheet, there's tons of columns, tons of information to fill out, which I don't fill out for every comic. I fill out the pertinent information. Now, yes, I do have some comics I do want to track very precisely. I will write down the writer's name. I will document the artist's the the colorist the line the inker the uh, the the letterer I will I will document all of that stuff in this and let's say for example let's just say I am a huge Doctor Strange nut let's say I want to have this issue signed by anyone who has ever worked on this particular issue so in that spreadsheet I will actually document comic book name comic book issue number whether it's a blank or not I will I will note uh, the artist or artists that worked on it, the inkers that worked on it, the colorists that worked on it, the letterer that worked on it, the editor, uh, the story writer, every any any information I could find about this comic book, there is a place in this spreadsheet for it. Now let's suppose, uh, like I said, I wanted this signed by everyone that ever worked on it. Well, if I'm going to a comic convention, I can then easily cross-reference the people appearing at that convention and just do a command find or a control find in my Google spreadsheets to see if so-and-so is listed in my spreadsheet. So, uh, you know, let's use Bob Budiansky, for example. So if I do a command find in my spreadsheet for Bob Budiansky, any book that I cared about noting that Bob Budiansky had anything to do with that book is going to show up in that search result. And then I can determine whether or not I want to take that book or those books to the convention to get signed by Bob Budiansky. That's, that's a big reason why I do it. I do it also, you know, like if I do have a book signed or I had a sketch cover drawn on, I'll use the spreadsheet to indicate who signed it and uh, who, did the, who did the blank cover art on it for me. I will document price if that's important. If I happen to pay a significant amount of money for a book, I would document that. Um, generally I don't, but if I do end up spending uh, a non-insignificant sum on a book off of eBay or from a convention, I will note that just for myself. So yeah, uh, anything you can use this spreadsheet for uh, that I've come across in my life, that spreadsheet has, has done. I will document that this book is going into drawer three of my file cabinet in box two. 
So if I do a search for Dr. Strange books, all my Dr. Strange books will show up and they will indicate what boxes they're in because they're not all necessarily in the same box. It's just been a very helpful tool. Now I am aware that there are online solutions, there are iOS app solutions, there are Android app solutions, there are computer app solutions that do this with a lot less work. My biggest beef with those apps is this, for example, like uh, Doctor Strange number one. Um, in my experience with these apps, you can't indicate which covers you have, how many copies of each cover you got, uh, or uh, or show the the drawn cover that you had done. So yeah, you you can take a picture of a comic for your spreadsheet and put it in your spreadsheet, make the graphic small, you know, don't make it 12 megs, you know, bring it down to a few K uh, and put it in there. Um, I don't do that. I know you can do that. I don't know if you'll hit a limit in a wall using a web app like Google Spreadsheets where it's like, it's just too much to download and too slow to process. Um, I can't speak to that because I don't do that. I do indicate whether it's cover A, B, C, or D, how many copies I have of it, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is in the show notes, you will find a link to uh, a template of this spreadsheet that I use and I'll fill out uh, one line uh, with a comic book with as much information as I can muster to put in so you have an example of it. Um, what I also do with this spreadsheet, which you might find useful or not, is I duplicate uh, the sheet. So then I've got two sheets and I've got one called My Collection and I've got another sheet uh, called Want List. And any books I'm looking for, I will put in that want list so that when I'm at the comic book shop, I can pull up Google Spreadsheets on my phone, I can tap on the want list uh, sheet and I can see what I'm looking for and search for it that day when I'm at the comic book store. Um, this comes in very, very handy, uh, especially when I'm in a new town and I'm not familiar with uh, what is in that local comic book store's uh, list. I can pull that up. Every book I've been ever looking for is in that list. I can search for the comic book store. Um, it's just been a very helpful tool for me, not only uh, organizing my collection, but keeping me uh, organized for what I'm looking for. So yeah, uh, great question, Dinobot Maximize. You had a couple other questions. I answered them down below in the comments. This was the big one. I thought this was worth sharing. I hope you guys find this template for my spreadsheet useful. And uh, yeah, that's it for this week. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.